today I want to talk about something that's been making a lot of waves recently, fluoride. We've been hearing about it from politicians, podcasters, celebrities. They're all talking about fluoride. Why? You know, for decades, fluoride has been touted as a hero that's going to help save teeth and prevent tooth decay. I no longer prescribe fluoride or use it in any way. Why? You know, is fluoride really the hero that we once thought it was, or is there more to the story? Well, let's dig into this and find out. There are some concerns about fluoride. I really want to just give it to you straight and tell you exactly what research is now showing us. So to do this, we're going to go through a few different things. We're going to talk about the history of fluoride, where it even came from. We're going to talk about the potential risks that science is proving today. And we're also going to talk about what do we do instead of fluoride and how do you protect your family from it? Let's get started. Okay, let's talk about how fluoride even started and how it got into our tooth products, into our water supply, into all the places that it is today. Back in the 1940s, researchers found that people who had higher levels of fluoride in their water naturally, these were people that were using well water. When that fluoride was higher, what they found is that these people did not get cavities. Now, what they don't always say is that they did have sometimes quite unsightly teeth with brown and white splotches on their teeth called fluorosis, but they didn't get cavities. So researchers looked at this and thought, hmm, what is this fluoride stuff? Maybe this could help us to eradicate tooth decay, to get rid of it completely. And really that was the goal, was just to get rid of tooth decay. So they started introducing fluoride into tooth care products like toothpaste, and it became pretty much the standard that that's the only thing you're going to use is a fluoride containing toothpaste for decades. And then they started introducing it into the water. Here's where the problem comes. First of all, you might not know, but fluoride is actually just a byproduct of industrial processes. So that's where it comes from originally. And then now they're putting it into water, into products, into a lot of things that we may not even recognize. And here's where my first concern started. In water and in tooth care products, it actually isn't dosed, meaning we don't know how much we're getting of fluoride, right? Because we might be drinking it in the water, we might be getting it in processed foods that are made with fluoridated water, which is very common. We might be giving it to babies in pre-made formulas, which have fluoride in them. We might be giving a supplement. We might be getting it in a toothpaste, in a mouthwash. There's so many different sources. And how do we know how much someone is getting in total? That's really the problem that I had originally with fluoride. Why am I getting the same dosage as my child? Let me use an example that might make a little more sense to you. Let's say that someone in the government decided that everybody is a little too depressed in our world. So they wanted to add Prozac or, you know, something that helps us feel happier to all of our water. Because when you think about fluoride, this is an interesting fact. Fluoride is the only thing added to our water that treats the person drinking the water. Chlorine is added to the water, but it treats the water, kills the bugs in the water. Fluoride is added to the water, not to do a thing to the water, only to treat the person. So let's say that Prozac was added to all of our water because we're all a little too depressed. This is really problematic, right? Because first of all, what if I'm already on Prozac? So now I have a double dose. Second, what if I actually don't need it? I'm not depressed, so I don't need it at all but I have it anyway, whether I wanted it or not. Third, well, now my child is getting the same dose as I'm getting. And what if I just am completely opposed to medications in general, even if I have symptoms that could be alleviated by this? All of these issues are real for fluoride. So again, the origin of fluoride was simply, we want to reduce tooth decay. And here's the truth about it. It does do that. It actually strengthens the crystals that teeth are made of. It makes them stronger and more resistant to decay. That is true. And research has shown time and time again that fluoride does reduce tooth decay. But that's not the end of the story. So let's keep talking about what that fluoride also does along with just strengthening teeth. 
All right, I talk all about cell health and you need to understand something. You've probably heard this term side effect, right? If you listen to any of those ads on TV about any medication, they talk about all the side effects that are gonna happen, including death. Well, a side effect is simply the effect that something that we ingest or put on us or whatever, something that comes in contact with our body, what it does to other cells. So for example, fluoride, we know that the intent of fluoride is to make teeth enamel stronger. It does that. It also affects literally every single other cell in the body. That's what everything does. There's no way to say this one medication is going to go just here. It doesn't work that way. It's going to create a side effect for every other cell. Those side effects are what really have me concerned and really the reason that I stopped recommending fluoride in any form to anyone. So let's talk about what they are. The first one makes a lot of sense. Now, bones and teeth are made of the same mineral called hydroxyapatite. Well, the way fluoride works with hydroxyapatite is it actually replaces the calcium in the hydroxyapatite and changes it into something called fluorapatite. So it's a fluoride related mineral complex, very hard, but also brittle. Well, bones are made of the same hydroxyapatite. So that fluoride also replaces calcium in your bones, creating a harder, more brittle crystal. Can we see why this could be concerning? We don't want brittle bones. And there have been research studies shown higher rates of bone fractures in areas that have high fluoridation because it's creating more brittle bones. So that one just makes sense. Some of the others may not make as much sense, but they do when you realize that everything acts on every cell. So it used to be a few decades ago, they were intentionally using fluoride to treat people who had hyperthyroid activity, meaning their thyroid was working overtime. So they were intentionally giving fluoride to these people because what they knew is that it would decrease thyroid activity. Let me say that again. They knew that fluoride decreased thyroid activity. How many people do you know in today's day and age that have low thyroid function or the symptoms of low thyroid function, which is fatigue, just lack of energy, no get up and go, really dry, like dry skin, dry mucous membranes. A lot of things are related to thyroid function. So many people are struggling with a lot of these symptoms. Could it be related to fluoride? Most likely. Let's talk about why this happens. So on the periodic table, we're gonna go back to science and you know, junior high. On the periodic table, fluoride is very similar to iodine. They're both in a category called halides. So it means they're cousins. They share some same similar characteristics. Now iodine is necessary to activate thyroid hormone. It's what plugs into the hormone and says, all right, now it's usable and your body can use it to create energy and all the things that we need. Well, fluoride will also activate or will bind to that thyroid hormone. But if it's bound by fluoride, your body doesn't know what to do with it. So now you have a blood test and it comes back, everything's fine. You have plenty of thyroid hormone. But what that test cannot test for is, is that thyroid hormone activated by fluoride instead of iodine? So now you have unusable hormone, low thyroid activity that actually isn't even detectable on a blood test. So many people, I think, are suffering from this and research is showing that this is correct. So that's one issue. Another issue that I think is really important to understand, a recent research article showed that if moms had a higher level of fluoride in their systems when they were expecting, their children had lower IQ rates. For real, this is real. That Levels of fluoride in the mom can lead to lower IQ, particularly in male babies. I'm sorry, but this is nothing that I want to mess with. I don't want to influence IQ rates in children based on fluoride. There are more that we can talk about, but we're going to stick to those main three. Here's the thing that I want you to really understand as well. So like we talked about, the first and main intent of fluoride was to prevent tooth decay, correct? Has it worked? Do you know of anyone who's had a cavity since the 1940s? <laughs> you know, of course you have. You know all sorts of people that have cavities. You probably included have had some tooth decay. 
So the original intent for fluoride was to prevent tooth decay and to eradicate it, get rid of it completely. It didn't actually work. There's still tooth decay today. And in fact, research shows there's more today than ever. So if fluoride was the only thing that was necessary to prevent it, we would see less or none. We don't see that. So fluoride didn't do the job that it was intended to do. Not only that, but excess fluoride can actually lead to blotches and splotches and brown and white spots on the teeth that are really unsightly. Nobody talks about this. So it didn't do what we hoped it would do. And it leads to a lot of other problems in the body, on the teeth themselves. Is it worth it? Well, that's a no-brainer, right? Of course not. It didn't do what we hoped, and it's creating all sorts of other issues. So no, it's not worth it. Simply put, fluoride has no more use in our water or in dental care products ever again. So why are we still using fluoride? If you walk the aisles in any big box store, you're going to see row after row of toothpaste and mouthwash and other products that contain fluoride. Well, I think part of this is that fluoride benefits have really been overstated. They do strengthen teeth, but they have not gotten rid of tooth decay. And it's been standard of care for so many years. It was standard of care when I was in school and still is today. This is just what dentists recommend. It's what we've been trained to recommend to you. We really need to get down to what does fluoride do to the teeth and is there something we could do instead? So a cavity is formed when minerals are pulled out of the tooth. Remember we talked about that tooth is made up of hydroxyapatite, which is a mineral complex. Well, when acid, either from bacteria eating sugar and then having a byproduct of acid or acid on your tooth itself, or when your body needs minerals. When all of those things happen, they pull minerals out of the tooth structure, leaving a hole. Now that hole allows bacteria to crawl in. The bacteria then eat more sugar, they excrete more acid, they create a bigger hole, and this is what a cavity is. So a cavity is not deficiency of fluoride. I want you to listen to that again. A cavity is not because you didn't have enough fluoride. It's not a fluoride deficiency. A cavity is a deficiency of minerals. You've lost minerals from your tooth structure. So guess what? We just need to replace the minerals to prevent tooth decay and sometimes even to heal tooth decay. So what do you do instead? We use the same thing that your teeth are made of, hydroxyapatite. When I realized that this was possible, I thought, why have I not been recommending this for my entire 20 plus years in dentistry? This just makes sense. So now we have hydroxyapatite tooth care products. I couldn't find one that I loved, so I actually developed my own tooth powder, mouthwash, toothpaste coming soon, that have hydroxyapatite in the right size and shape that can fit right into those holes in the tooth. Now, what size and shape is that? There's a lot of controversy about that. It just needs to be smaller than the hole. And how big are these holes? Well, they're anywhere from 100 to 900 nanometers in size. Nanometer is super, super tiny. That means we need something smaller than that to be able to fit in and plug up these holes. The great thing is, is that research is showing that hydroxyapatite does just that. But the cool thing is, is it actually creates kind of a sacrificial layer of minerals on the outside. So when the acid hits your tooth, that layer is going to go away first, leaving your tooth enamel alone. So the hydroxyapatite not only can rebuild teeth that have lost minerals, but it also protects teeth from future problems with acid or bacteria or any future tooth decay. It's honestly pretty miraculous. So that's the alternative for any tooth care products. You're going to replace your toothpaste. You're going to replace your mouthwash. You're going to replace anything that has fluoride in your bathroom with things that have hydroxyapatite instead. But that's not the only place you may need to protect your family. The other place you need to protect them is from the fluoride that's been added to water. Now, what do you do about this? You're going to need to get a filter. There are only a few filters that actively remove fluoride from the water. There was one called Berkey that I hear is coming back that had a specific fluoride filter on it. That worked great. That's really the only carbon filter that adequately could remove it. 
The only other way that it can be removed is through a reverse osmosis or a distillation system. So reverse osmosis removes everything, including the fluoride. But key here, it also removes all the minerals from the water. So if you do use reverse osmosis water, you have to add minerals back in. Otherwise, that water will pull minerals from your teeth as well. So you have to get filtered water. The other thing you need to do is be really conscious that some processed foods are made with water that has fluoride in it as well, especially things that are liquid. So if you have juices, juice boxes, juice drinks, those kinds of things, they may have been made with fluoridated water. It's not gonna say it on the label. It was simply the water that they had available at the manufacturing plant. So in my home, we minimize all of that. We don't do a lot of processed things that have a lot of liquid in them. I don't want the fluoride coming through there. These are ways to protect your family because like I'd said, cavities are not a deficiency of fluoride. We have no use for fluoride ever again at home. Even in the dental office, we don't use it here either. We use hydroxyapatite here. Ask your dentist for alternatives to fluoride in the dental office. We use hydroxyapatite varnishes instead of fluoride varnishes at the end of cleaning appointments for kiddos. There are options today that work great. Like I said at the beginning, this is a controversial subject, but science is now catching up to what we once thought that wasn't actually accurate. This information isn't meant to scare you, it's meant to empower you, to give you the information that you need to make correct choices for your family and to give you resources and information to do just that. If you would like more information, please click the link in the description below to read the full article. And if it's time, if it's time for you to make a switch to a fluoride-free alternative, please check out my products online at livingwellwithdrmichelle.com. I am excited to provide things that I know are gonna simply be good for you. Because like I always say, health starts with the cells and the cells get what they need from what you give them, whether it be the things you eat, the things you put in your mouth, the things you put on your body, let's only give ourselves the things that are gonna help them be healthy so that you can be healthy and live well too.